Like in C, an array in Java is a fixed size homogeneous collection. That is, the number of members in an array is fixed, it doesn't change once you create the array, and all of these members are of the same type. From there though, the similarities with C end. Because whereas an array in C is something which is always allocated on the stack, in Java an array is just another kind of object, it's something that goes on the heap. Furthermore, what that object is made up of is really just references, not actual other objects. So for example, say we have an apple array of size 4. Well that object is somewhere on the stack and it consists of four references of type apple. And when that object is created, each of those references start out null, but we can assign apple objects to them. And in fact, just like references which are fields or local variables, these references can be assigned any object which qualifies as that type, which qualifies in this case as an apple. So for example, if Fuji is a descendant of apple, then we can assign Fuji objects to these apple references. Like classes and interfaces, arrays are reference types. So when we create a local variable m of type mammal array, then m is a reference. To then create an actual mammal array object, we use the new operator, but instead of putting parentheses after the class name, we put the subscript operators, the square brackets, and inside we put the size of the array. So here we are creating a new mammal array with three elements and assigning it to m. To then get at the individual elements of the array, we use the subscript operator, very much like it looks in C. In C, though, you may recall, the subscript operator is really just syntactical magic that stands in for a dereference with pointer arithmetic. Well, in Java, we have no notion of dereferencing and pointer arithmetic, so that's not what's going on. It's simply we are getting at here the element at index 2 of the mammal array. And of course, arrays are indexed starting from 0, so index 2 is actually the last element in this three element array. So in this line, we're creating a new mammal object and assigning it to the last slot of the array. And again, because the mammal array is an object that consists of three mammal references, those references can point to any object which is a valid mammal. So assuming a cat object is a valid kind of mammal, we can assign a cat to the first slot in this array. Finally, every array object has an int field called length, which is the size of the array. So m.length here returns the int value 3. Now the key idea with arrays is that for every type we have, there is a corresponding array type. So if our class hierarchy looks like this, we have a parallel hierarchy which looks the same except all the types are arrays. And the importance of this is that if, say, Natalie is a subtype of Jerry, then a Natalie array is considered a subtype of Jerry array. Also, the object array at the top of this parallel hierarchy itself is considered a subtype of object. So effectively, every array type is considered a subtype of object. So the consequence of this is that we can assign a cat array object to not just a cat array reference, but also to a mammal array reference, assuming mammal is an ancestor of cat. And then also we can assign the same object to an object array reference, and then also to just a plain old object reference. Implicitly in these cases, we are upcasting. When you assign C to M, we have to upcast from cat array to mammal array. And when we assign C to O1, we have to upcast from cat array to object array. But we don't have to explicitly write these casts. The compiler will just assume they are there. However, when we take our object reference, which we know is actually holding a cat array object, we have to explicitly use a downcast to assign its value back to an actual cat array reference. When we do assign, say, a cat array object to a mammal array reference, the important thing to keep in mind, though, is that the cat array object is still an array of cat references. But when we get at the slots via a mammal array reference, the Java compiler is going to see this as type mammal, so it's going to allow us to assign to it a mammal object. What happens then at runtime anytime we assign to an array is a type check. And so when the runtime sees we're attempting to assign a mammal to a cat reference, which is not proper, a mammal is not a type of cat, the runtime will throw an exception. Specifically, it throws a runtime exception called array store exception. 
to avoid these exceptions, you need to be careful with your logic and keep track of which types of arrays are actually going to be assigned to references. The all-important idea here is that the compiler only sees the compile time type of an array reference. It doesn't know what actually is going to be stored in it. So in this example, when we assign a cat array to a mammal array reference, and then assign a cat to the first index of the array, well so far the compiler is happy, because even though what is really a cat array the compiler sees as a mammal array, the compiler won't object because a cat is a valid kind of mammal. However, when we try and get that cat object from the array and assign it to a cat reference, the compiler objects because the compile time type of a subscript of M is mammal, and a mammal isn't a valid kind of cat. The workaround here is to simply downcast from moose to cat. This makes the compiler happy, and when this executes, the runtime will do a type check to make sure that what gets returned here really is a cat object.